What's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical average American here today to react and learn about five of the best classic English dishes. You know what I've noticed? There seem to be two huge differences between American culture and British culture that are endless. One of them is all of our different words and terms and phrases in our slang. It is amazing how we are both English-speaking countries, and yet at times it seems like our, our language could not be more different for certain things. And uh, the other thing I really enjoy is how different our food is. You know, including all the drinks and the snacks and desserts and uh, what we're learning about today, some of the dishes it's so different and it's so fun to learn about. So I have a little video here that I found, which is some fellow Americans traveling around Northern England, trying some classic English food and five of what they think are the best. So I'm really interested to learn about these five dishes and what they're like and if I love them, if I hate them, uh, who knows what, but I'm excited. So let's take a look. A first is the pasty, not to be confused with pasty, as we thought it was, and it's basically a savory pastry. Whoa, hold, hold on, we're jumping right into it, hold on. Pasty? Did she say pasty? Pasty, not to be confused. Let me, let me hear that again. So a first is the pasty. Not pasty? Like, uh, it's funny because I don't know if this is a British thing or an English thing, but there's so many foods that kind of look like this. And yet, there's nothing like this in the United States or American culture. Br like, food that's inside of stuff that's not dessert. It's like these, these pies, there's meat pies and mince pies, or all sorts of pies and stuff inside of bread, and it, it, it looks wonderful. It honestly is like, comes across as very fancy to me, because this is just a dish prepared in a way that we don't do over here. Not to be confused with pasty, as we thought it was. And it's basically a savory pastry. Okay, All right. it is a pastry? Oh, a savory pastry. So maybe there's some meat inside of this. I'm looking at the description, and I think this is a breakfast item? <laughs> Speechless. Mm -hmm. Oh. That is amazing. Mm -hmm. There is so much flavor in there, oh my gosh. It seems incredibly hearty. And comparing this to like, uh, I mean, what what is the classic American breakfast dish, you know? A bowl of cereal? Uh, some pancakes and bacon? Uh, a, a breakfast bar? A cereal bar or something? It's nothing that comes close to this. So the pasty is originally um, credited to Cornwall, which I guess is an area in the UK. Okay. And you take the dough and then you put like uncooked meat and cheese or vegetables or whatever you want. Hold it in half, crimp it, and then bake it. Oh, I'm, I'm actually so happy that they are explaining what this is. It's a pesty dough with a bunch of savory, delicious items baked inside of it. Sounds great to me. This is a perfect example of a food item I think Americans would really love. They're all baked together, but it stays really nice and juicy in there, which I love. Ah. And the veggies give it a nice, like, well-rounded taste, not yeah. just all meat. Yeah. Hey guys, this is Tall. What's up? This is Matt. They're going to be joining us today. Matt just tried this, and I think it knocked his socks off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess I, I'd like to know how common are some of these dishes, because this pesty, is this something you really order out at a, at a restaurant or a breakfast? Because it does seem a little, you know, there's some effort put in to prepare a dish like that. Is it tough to make? Is this something people might make at home or something? I'm curious. Oh, wow. Okay, so this is what I have been waiting for since we got to England. We've been to England before, but we've never had a proper, I guess they call it a fry-up or a full English breakfast. Full English breakfast. I have heard this phrase before. Fry-up. I've never heard of a fry-up, but I've heard of the full English breakfast. Uh, it sounds very hearty, sounds big and grand and very English. I'm not exactly sure what technically goes into one. But... This 
is some black pudding. Black pudding? <laughs> See, okay. <laughs> My excitement drains away immediately. No, I don't want to be too critical, but we don't do this whole pudding stuff in the United States. If we have pudding, it's like, it's chocolate pudding or vanilla pudding or something at a buffet somewhere. This solid pudding, I don't even think of pudding that way. So it's hard to me to kind of get my little American brain around, but oh, okay, okay, pudding. Which is, it's um, either pork or beef fat, and then oatmeal and pork blood. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it, the look on her face says it all. Like blood, oatmeal, and pork fat stirred up and made into like a solid pudding. This is normal, apparently. This is not seen as strange to English people, but believe me, this is beyond, beyond strange to me. I, I, I like, I've never had it. I, sh I shouldn't knock it necessarily. I don't know. I don't know what the flavor is. <laughs> but this is, this is pretty um, traditional. Other than the baked okay. beans, it usually comes with baked beans and- Beans, you yeah. You guys might get mad at us, because I think proper breakfasts have them, but- Oh, yes. A proper English breakfast. Surely it has beans, right? Half the videos I watch have to do with beans or something. We have the mushrooms and tomatoes. We have the, the bacon, the sausage, the eggs, the fry bread. Wow. And the so or the... I mean, you can't deny it. It looks very hearty. Looks very tasty. I don't like if... I almost wish someone would serve this to me and not tell me that stuff is the, the pudding. <laughs> so I could just make it up in my mind and then it, it would probably taste good and I'd be like, oh, what is this? And they'd be like, oh, that's the pudding. I'd just <coughs> start choking. But uh, maybe at that point I'd be like, you know what? It's pretty good. Uh, other than that, yeah, it all looks pretty delicious. The, the bacon, the sausage, the eggs, the fry bread. Yeah. And the, so or the what did I call it? Blood pudding. Blood, Blood. <laughs> black pudding. Black pudding. Black pudding. Black pudding. Guys, I've been hearing about black pudding ever since we came to the UK last year. And I'm so excited to try it. Oh Do boy. I, should I use a knife and fork? See, even there, they're Americans. They they are making a big deal out of this because it's just truly not something that exists in any shape or form in American life ever. <laughs> or do you just pick it up? So, thank you, yeah, cut in there. Sorry if I'm doing it wrong. Okay. He's actually really good. It, it, he's not vomiting. He's not projectile vomiting or anything. As a matter of fact, he says it's, it's good. It's um, really crispy on the outside, but the inside is all moist and gooey. And yeah, pretty much tastes like it smells. I don't really taste all the individual parts of it. It all just kind of like comes together and makes one kind of overall taste. One kind of overall savory, meaty taste in the form of a solid pudding. Firm on the outside, soft on the inside. Yeah, I think it's more of a mental thing. Like, it's probably a lot better than I think it is. You should try it. Okay. <laughs> oh. It is really good. It's really crunchy on the outside. Really juicy on the inside. Okay. And it's salty. I have no clue what it tastes like, though. I don't yeah, have anything really to compare it to. It's just a unique taste huh? of its own, isn't it? Ah, dang. See, that's kind of annoying, but it makes sense. They, there's nothing they can compare it to. This is nice that they're, uh, they're Americans trying all these things because I can really relate to like obviously the, their culture and what they're thinking and they're saying they can't even relate the taste of this uh, pudding to anything that I might know of. Yeah. It tastes like a... Um... <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, he starts choking. <laughs> stuffing like on Thanksgiving, you know, like with the yeah. turkey and stuff. It, it tastes exactly like that. Oh, I wasn't expecting that. Tastes like uh, stuffing on Thanksgiving. Okay. Stuffing is kind of a strange flavor too to compare that to. Just kind of a savory, bready, meaty, kind of good taste, let's say. Oh, yeah, this looks good. So this is apparently boar sausage, which I don't think I've ever had. So let's see how that goes. Boar sausage, fascinating. All the little differences. I don't think we, yeah, we don't have boar sausage here, unless there's something I don't know about. It's all pig. Pigs and boars are like pretty similar, right? Is that ignorant to say? I feel like it. they are. It's 
surprisingly tastes a lot like breakfast sausage, but okay. maybe more more fatty and creamy. Okay. Is the way I describe it. Okay, that's cool. That is so cool because you could kind of make this same dish in America with the eggs and the sausage and the mushrooms and maybe not the pudding, but it even seems like the the, the same ingredients made in America would be different, like different type of egg, different type of sausage, as they were saying. So it, you really have to go to, to England to get the proper full English breakfast. There's no imitating the original, uh, I get the sense. The fry up was amazing, as expected. The fry up. So glad we finally got to try the blood pudding. And despite the name being a little bit intimidating, it was actually black pudding. I think it goes by blood pudding other places, but let's Oops. call it black pudding. Okay, they've, yeah, because they've kind of, <laughs> they've kind of made that mistake a few times in this video, either calling it black pudding or blood pudding. Neither, like, sounds wonderful to me. Neither makes me think, oh, that sounds delicious. Uh, but blood pudding, especially, that might actually cause Americans to avoid it. Uh, by the sound of it, there actually is blood in the ingredients, so it's accurate. But black pudding sounds dramatic, but more palatable, I guess you could say. <laughs> Sorry if I'm butchering it, but we're glad we got to try it. And it uh, actually was a little bit more delicious than we thought it would be. Okay. Yes, also with the traditional full breakfast, it comes with baked beans. So make sure when you go looking for it to yes. get the baked beans. I think it adds a lot to it. The baked beans, that is such a, such a British English thing again. Basically as much as the pudding. I really enjoyed learning about the pudding. Honestly, I didn't realize it's it's like crispy on the outside and and soft on the inside That seems like a very pleasing sort of thing. What is it? A, it's what would you even call it? Well a pudding. I don't know why I'm trying to Rationalize it in my my brain somehow uh, Really really interesting. Honestly nothing like it <laughs> Except stuffing apparently I was just missing it. And it was really sad Next up, we're gonna be trying cream tea, which is like a light afternoon snack. It's basically a scone, some jam, and some clotted cream. And the cream tea? Like tea the drink? Because then he, he just went on to mention a bunch of items that are definitely not a drink. Afternoon snack, it's basically a scone, some jam, and some clotted cream, and a side of tea. So now we're back. Oh, it's like certain items with a side of tea. Okay, got it. Cream tea. Is that the name of the meal? I'm sorry, I, <laughs> I really got a lot of questions about the details of this stuff. In a town called Cowan Bridge, which is just near Kirby Lonsdale. This is the place we've been staying in. It's called the Bronte Schoolhouse because the Bronte sisters used to go here for a while it's back a, in like the 1800s. Yeah, it's a real old schoolhouse built in the south. Bronte sisters. I'm not sure who that is. I, I think I'll look that up though. Bronte sisters? Uh, yeah, this is a thing. What is this? Hold on. Let me get to the bottom of this. Since we're talking about it, what are the... I feel like I gotta know something here. Charlotte Bronte was an English novelist and poet, eldest of three Bronte sisters, whose novels became classics of English literature. Classics? We're talking about classic uh, English dishes today. Why not some classic English literature thrown in as well? Okay. It's actually good to know. Feel educa more educated now. 1700s, yeah, it's crazy. It's super awesome, super authentic. Yeah. But just down the road is a convenience store that has a little tea room in it that we've been going to to buy uh, all of our groceries and things. And every- Is that, no, wait a minute. I'm gonna pause it on that too, because is that normal? Is that a normal, normal part of English culture? There's a tea room? in the convenience store, he said. Convenience store that has a little tea room in it that we've been going to to buy all of our groceries and things. And everyone's been recommending to try the cream tea, so we're just gonna walk down there and give it a try. Yeah. A convenience store, like where you just buy stuff? Like at a, like when I think of a convenience store, it's like a gas station or petrol station store with random items you can buy in it. In England, some of those have tea rooms, like you, you're gonna hang out and have and have this tea dish that that whole premise is is new to me honestly not just the dish but you guys it's so cold out here it is, it is getting very cold perfect tea weather 
<laughs> All right. Wow. You know, that's actually a really good point, too, the more I think about it. Is that why tea is kind of a such a big cultural institution as well in, you know, England and Britain? Because of the climate? Like, when it's colder weather, tea is really nice to have. It's a hot drink. That just... I can't believe I just put that together now as well. Okay. <laughs> Better late than never, right? Oh, here we go. Hold on. I want to read that, actually. Cohen Bridge Tea Room. Open now. Oh, this is so nice. Hot food, homemade cakes, refreshments. This is... A, you would really be hard... You would not really find something like this in America. I don't even know what to relate this to. A tea room. There's nothing. It's like... It's like black pudding. There's nothing to relate it to. <laughs> Yes, what the heck? This is a convenience store. It, like, I almost didn't believe it when I heard it. This is just a convenience store where you buy stuff and snacks and bananas and there's a cash register, but there's also a, like, it sells regular good food. Because <laughs> at convenience stores in America, it's definitely not expected to be good food or fresh food, but this seems nicer. Hmm. And the tea room. Check this place out. Is this this is, is. It is so perfect. Cute. It is oh, the cutest yes. little place, and we have it all to ourselves. This is so cool. I've never. This is actually so cool. There's a little room, like dedicated to just hanging out in the back and having tea. That is so British. Oh my gosh, the most British thing I've learned. <laughs> this is awesome. And the teacups. And jam. <laughs> oh my god, oh my gosh. Oh, we got the teapot uh, with the thing on it. The, to keep it warm, the tea cozy. Oh my gosh, it's a real tea cozy. Oh, I'm having a real American moment right now. This is fantastic. <laughs> Check this out, they have these little teapot covers. Yeah. They're so cute. To keep the tea warm. The teapot cover, it's a tea cozy, right? I know that term. They sell them right over here too. Allison's like dead set on buying one. <laughs> <laughs> I want the little sheep. I don't even have a teapot, but I'd get one. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> oh, tea, then milk. I know there's like a big uh, debate over what order you put things in. I'm seeing tea, then milk. <laughs> Oh, yes. That is a delight. It's like gotten real cold outside. It's starting to drizzle a little, a little bit. And this tea is just pretty much perfect for this occasion. It's very cozy. And then you have all, you have the tea and you have certain foods that kind of go with the tea. This is, yeah, this, this classifies. Yeah, this is a perfect example of a classic, classic English dish. And by dish, I like that it's a kind of a set of things that goes together. Like with the English breakfast, it's kind of a group of items that you eat together for breakfast. Here for the tea, it's not just tea time, but you have these, what, scones and jellies and covers and stuff. This is so cozy and cool. But uh, I'm looking at the time here and we're only like halfway done with this video. And, and I've been going on for quite a while. I think I've been talking a lot because there's a lot of really interesting stuff happening. So... I think I'm not going to rush this. I'm just going to, I'm going to stop here for now and uh, pick up the rest of this video and finish it in part two. But I've really been enjoying learning about these classic English dishes and English food here. So uh, if you've enjoyed this as well, feel free to give this video a like or leave a comment. And if you're interested in more videos like this, me reacting to British culture and stuff in Britain and England I've never learned about before, or if you're inter interested in part two, feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thanks for watching, and see you next time.